Okay, this is section 6.1, percents and decimals. So let's do a little review. Um, so a percent is a value out of 100. Um, so that's what percent actually means. That uh, cent, like century, means 100, and the word per means out of. So percent literally means out of 100. So if we look at these first six problems here, it says write the percent shown by the model. These are 10 by 10 squares. And we want to show the percentage of them that are shaded. So in example A, we've got <coughs> six rows that are shaded. And each row, because they're 10 by 10 squares, has 10 in them. So this would be 60%. One way you can get 60% is by, again, counting the shaded ones, or you could count the, the squares that aren't shaded. Um, there's 40 squares that aren't shaded, and you could subtract that from the total. We know percents are always out of 100. For example, B, every single share or square is shaded, so we have 100% of them shaded. In example C, this one's tricky. We've got three rows that are fully shaded, so there's 30. But if we count this as a fourth row, then that will be 40, and that's wrong because we'll have counted these three squares twice, and we don't want to do that. So if that would be 40, if we have four rows, and we take away the three squares that we've counted twice, that makes it 37%. And again, that's going to be easier than trying to count all the, indiv all the individual squares. Think of them as rows. All right, example D. We've got, it looks like every other square is shaded, like a checkerboard. So this would be 50% is shaded. And then example E. Now, this was a cool one because in example E, again, instead of counting uh, rows and thinking, okay, these have already been counted twice, uh, what we have here is inside we have a 6 by 6 square. And 6 by 6, of course, is 36. So if we just take 100 and subtract the way the squares that aren't shaded, 100 minus 36 is 64%. That's an easier way of doing example E. And then example F, instead of doing 100 squares, they've given 10 columns. Well, we know each row, remember, was 10. So 1 tenth is the same as 10% because each of, those would, each of those rows would have 10 squares in them. All right, so if we're going to convert between fraction, decimal, and percent, let's start going from fraction to decimal to percent. To go from fraction to decimal, we've done this before, we divide top by bottom. That will give you the decimal. Make sure you're always doing top divided by bottom, not bottom divided by top, not biggest number divided by smallest number. It's always the top number first. So we've done that earlier in the year. We've done that. Moving from decimal to percent, however, we just need to slide the decimal point two places to the right. Okay, that's because percents are out of 100. And the word, the prefix deca, like decade means 10. So every time I move the decimal one spot over, it's like I'm timesing by 10. So if I move it two spots over, I'm timesing by 10 times 10, which is 100. And that's why we move it two places to the right, not to the end. It's always two places. Sometimes it's the end. Sometimes moving it twice doesn't put us at the end of the number. So always two places to the right. All right, so let's practice a little bit. In example A, we're converting this fraction, or actually, which is a mixed number, to a percent, but, in, but first, we're gonna turn it into a decimal. So the one that's in front of the number, that just becomes, that's just the whole number, right? So I'm going to put that in front of the decimal. All I have to worry about is the two-fifths. Well, you may remember this from last year. Two-fifths is the decimal 0.4. If you don't remember it from last year, then do two, divided by 5, and you'll get 0 0.4. But remember, the 1 is in front because it's a mixed number. So 1.4. And then when we slide the decimal two spots to the right, this 1.4 becomes 140. We have to put an extra 0 in. Percent. In example B, 5 eighths. Again, you may remember this one from last year, too. Uh, eighths are a little bit trickier to remember, but do 5 divided by 8 and you'll get 0 0.625. Slide the decimal two spots to the right to go from decimal to percent, and that makes it 62.5% or 62.5%. 
And then example C, two thirds. I feel like this is the problem that just keeps coming up this year, right? Two thirds. Uh, we know from um, doing our homework on big ideas that they don't like repeating decimals. Anytime we've had to, uh, the decimal 0.6 repeating, we've had to replace it with two thirds on big ideas because they are the same. So if I slide the decimal two spots to the right, I don't want to put another zero here. I want to put a six because the six is repeating. So 66, and I don't want to put 66 repeating percent. You can't put re repeating bar unless it's over a decimal. So we're going to put 66.6 .6 repeating percent. Now, if we're putting our homework in on our big ideas homework and uh, they don't accept repeating decimals, then again, we would replace this 0.6 repeating with two thirds, because we know 0.6 repeating is two thirds, and then we would say it's 66 and two thirds percent. All right, so what if we're moving in the other direction? What if we have a percent already and we're trying to convert it into a fraction? Well, the first thing we would do is we would take that percent and first convert it into a decimal. So to convert a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal place, decimal point backwards two places, so that would be to the left. Once we've got it as a decimal, we've done this part before earlier in the year, we write that number over its place value. So if it's got one decimal place, we put it over 10. If it's got two decimal places, we put it over 100. If it's got three decimal places, we put it over 1,000, and so on and so forth. So again, what makes this a little, uh, more time consuming, I wouldn't say hard, but a little bit more time consuming, is all fractions have to be reduced. So make sure that we reduce when we're done. Okay, so to convert from percent to fraction, again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write uh, the each of these percents as a decimal, which we needs, means we need to move it backwards two times, and that becomes 0.9. And then we write 9 over its place value, which is out of 10, and that doesn't need to be reduced. All right, on example B, 275%. Again, we take the decimal point, which is, oops, which is at the end there, and we're going to move it backwards two spots, and that makes it 2.75. Now, that 2 that's out in front just becomes the whole number part. We're going to turn this into a mixed number. All we have to worry about is the 75 and it, because it has two decimal places, we put it over 100. So don't freak out. Don't put 275 over 1,000 or anything like that. This 2, which is in front of the decimal here, that just goes in front of our fraction. So we need to reduce this. And you may remember from last year that 75 one hundredths, or 0 0.75, 75 cents, is 3 quarters. So this would be 2 and 3 fourths which again, another word for fourths is quarters. All right, and on the last example, 4%, moving the decimal backwards twice and filling in with an extra zero is gonna give us 0 0.04. And because it has two decimal places, we still have to consider that. We put it over 100. And then we can reduce. Four one hundredths, if you divide by two, would give you two fiftieths. So I can divide by two again, and that would give us one twenty-fifth. So four one hundredths is one twenty-fifth. All right, so now we have a fraction decimal percent conversion chart, or an FDP chart, and we can fill in any of the blanks that we have here. So for the first uh, line, we've got three-fourths, which we know is 75% as a dec or as a percent, and they're asking for the decimal version. So we can either move the decimal backwards twice to make this 0.75, or we could turn the fraction into a decimal by doing three divided by four, which is also 0.75. For the next one, we've got 45% or 0 0.45. And to write it as a fraction, again, we take the number 45 and we write it over its place value, which is over 100. Both those numbers can be reduced by 5. So we reduce by 5, and 45 divided by 5 is 9. And 100 divided by 5 is 20th. So that's going to be 9 twentieths. All right, on the next one, 5.6%. We're missing both of the boxes, so we have to do both. To turn it into whoops, a decimal, we are going to move the decimal point backwards twice, which gives us 0 0.056. 
And then we write that number, 56, over its place value, which is 1,000, because it's in the thousands column. So we have three decimal places. And then we reduce until we can't reduce anymore. So we can divide by two. That would be 28 over 500. We can divide by two again, which would be 14 out of 250. And we can re reduce by two yet again. And if we reduce by two one more time, I guess I'll have to write it over here. That would be seven. And 250 divided by two is 125. So seven out of 125 is our reduced fraction. So if I can divide by two and two and two, I guess I could have divided by eight. And that would have worked, but I didn't, you know, if you don't see that right away, that's fine. For the next one, we've got 3.48 as a percent. We move that decimal point two spots to the right, which is 348%. And as a fraction, that three that's out in front just becomes our whole number. And then we write 48 over its place value. It has two of them, so 100. And we can reduce that. This time I'm gonna to try to reduce by the biggest number I can. I know that four goes into 48 because it has a four and an eight in it. So that would be, tw uh, that would be 12 times. And then I know that four also goes into 100 because quarters are worth 25 cents and there's four of those so this reduces to three and twelve twenty-fifths and then finally on the last one one and one-third the one just goes out in front so all I need to do is the one-third part well the one-third remember one-third is point three repeating so one point three repeating when I convert it to a percent that would be one hundred and thirty three because there's a repeating three there. Don't put a zero because there's the three that repeats. And then because the three just keeps going, I can say 0.3 repeating percent. Or if I need to write this as a mixed number, I can say 133 and one third percent. All right, on a math test, you get 92 out of a possible 100 points. Select all the possible ways of expressing 92 out of 100. So 92 out of 100, I mean, percents literally mean out of 100, so 92% would mean 92 out of 100. Um, oops, I'm not sure why that did that. Let's we'll circle that again. And then 0 0.92 is what 92% would be as a decimal. And then so we're left with these fractions. So if we do top divided by bottom, which is how we convert a fraction into a decimal, 23 divided by 25 is 0 0.92. Again, just use your calculator. Okay, so that one works. Let's see if this other one, 17 divided by 20, use my calculator there, is 0 0.85. So that one is not going to work, but there are three correct answers here that you can express 92 out of 100. All right, so in our last problem here, it says the figure shows the portions of ultraviolet or UV rays reflected by four different surfaces. So we've got grass, sand, sea foam, and water. How many times more UV rays are reflected by water than by sea foam? So what we're gonna need to do is convert all of these into, well, I would say probably percents would be easiest, and then we can compare. So we've already got grass, which is 3%. And that makes sense. Grass only would reflect 3% because it's, it absorbs the sun's energy to grow. The sand is would be 15%, and it only reflects 15% of the sun's rays. So that means it absorbs 85%. If you ever walked across sand on a hot day, you know it can get really hot, so it absorbs quite a bit. Sea foam. The sea foam is already a percent, 25%. And then we have water, which reflects 21 25 So it reflects almost all of the sun's energy. So if we turn 21 and 25 into a percentage by first turning it into a decimal, we get 0.84. And then 0.84 would convert to 84%. So the question said, how many times more? So anytime you are asked a question that says how many times more or how many times greater, we don't actually multiply. We're actually going to divide, which is your blank down here, to find out how many times larger a number is, we divide. So for example, if I wanted to know how many times larger four is 
from 28. Well, we're timesing by 7. So 28 is 7 times larger. We're actually just dividing 28 by 4. So using that same logic, when it says how many times more UV rays are reflected by water than by seafoam, we're going to do 84 divided by 25 to see how many times 25 would go into 84. And 84 divided by 25 is 3.36. So 3.36 times as many UV rays are reflected by water. And you'll use that on one of your homework questions tonight. You'll have to use the how many times larger uh, thing in order to divide and get your answer. So that's it.